Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new tutorial uh, voted for by the Patreon members. So massive thank you to all the Patreon members who voted for this video. And what we're doing today is we're going to show you how to make a game transition smoothly from a cutscene into the actual gameplay. So let's take a look at how we achieve this. So here we are in my little demo game. And let me take us to a level. And we'll do this one. Okay, so here we are with this level set up here. And I want to do a very short cutscene, intro cutscene for the player coming into the room. And then we're going to smoothly transition the camera back behind the cam uh, character. So let's first of all set up our character's um, animations and things like that. So what I need to do is first of all, put in our player character. And I then want to go and create a level sequence for my player character. And we'll put that in our maps folder. We'll do level sequ sequence lobby intro. Like that. Okay, so let's add our player character to the sequence here. There we are. Now, I don't want it to use a control rig. We're going to take that off. So, click the control rig. I'm going to delete that. And I'll do a very simple one. I'm not going to spend too long animating it, but you get to just animate whatever you want to animate. Um, but there we go. So, we're going to animate our character around and move them into the scene. So, let's just say I'm going to go a transform. And we're going to move them over to here. And like that. Okay. So then they come like this. And I might drag that out a little bit. So the intro coming in. Uh, but then I'm going to do a camera movement. So we're going to add a camera for our cutscene. And with that camera here, to make it blend easily with the game camera, we're going to set up similar settings for it. So with it selected, go to the details panel. And we're going to turn off the constraint aspect ratio. I get rid of those black bars, you see. And we also need to change the focal length. So at the moment, the focal length between the camera here versus the player camera is different. So we're going to change the current focal length to down from 35 to 15. And see if that matches with what you're seeing there. So if I jump from the camera point of view, that matching pretty well. A little bit off, we'll change that to 20, maybe. Oh, no, let's try that 10, by the way. Mm, let's go a little bit further, let's go 12. That's looking a bit better. You want to get as close as possible. Otherwise, it'll look a bit distorted when it does make that change. Anyway, so there is our camera setup. So let me go to our camera here and pilot it. And we're going to modify the transform on this thing. So let's just move that around here. Like this. And then... We're going to bring the camera back round to the player character. And I want to get as close as possible if I can. Not not too fast, but I'm going to get pretty close to where you want the camera to end up going. So we've got the movement going into there. Okay. And I think that's good. Okay. So obviously, do whatever you want to do for your animation. That's all you need to worry about there. So the main thing here is the smoothing and also we need to make sure that the character stays put after they've been moved by the level sequence. So in regards to that latter one, making the character stay put, we click on the third person character, go to your transform track for this and you want to right click on it. Yep, sorry. Um, and then go to when finished, you want to change that to keep state. And that will stay put once it's got to that position. Okay. 
we then want to blend the camera into it. So let's first of all end our cutscene there. Let's bring that down like that. And you want to right click on the camera cuts and do can blend. And when you do this, you'll see little yellow triangles in the corners of this very hard to see and even harder to grab hold of but once you grab hold of them you can drag out a smoothing line and this allows you to blend your cutscenes in and out so this being an intro cutscene i'm going to cut to this camera so I'm not right about doing it here but on the back end of it i am so let's just bring that in like this so it'll come in and it'll blend at that point with the player camera okay so, so we now need to get it to play the level sequence. So I'm going to go to my level blueprint because it's going to happen right at the start. I'm going to put on begin play. So I want to select my level sequence from the map. So click on that. And we'll create a reference to it. And in here, we're going to do the play. Sequence player. Okay, so let's take a look at that in action. So, push and play, you can see the character will move, but I'm still possessing a different character completely. I want my character to be that character. So, that is how to do dynamic session. So, if I go to the third person character here over here, I'm going to right click on this, and I'm going to, first of all, convert it to a spawnable object. So, this character will only spawn in for the animation. That's the first thing. So you'll see it's portable because there's this little lightning bolt icon on the thumbnail of it. If you right click on it again, you want to go to dynamic spawn and on the end point, create a quick bind to resolved player pawn. And it will create a function for you. And this is how you can swap any actor in place for a different actor during the level sequence. All you have to do is use uh, return whatever actor you want in here. So if I break this apart, you can see you can put in any object. So however you want to get that object, totally up to you. In this case, though, we just want the player pawn, so it's really dead simple. I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, so the character here will be uh, spawnable and dynamically possessed. And you can tell it's dynamically possessed because an even smaller icon of a blue triangle in the bottom left where my mouse is. Um, yeah, it's really annoyingly hard to see, but it's there. Okay, so you should have that and the thunderbolt. So let's push play again. And you're looking a lot better now. Okay. Let's do that again. Ignore those errors for something unrelated. But we've now got a much smoother transition from game cinematic back again. All using your player character as the pawn. There you go. Uh, that is our smooth transitioning from game to cutscene and cutscene to game. There are loads of things to cover with level sequence, so by means, do let me know in the comments below if there's anything specific you want to see with level sequences. Uh, be sure that they are getting read, just not responding to every single one, but they are getting read by someone, and we are putting together a list of things to cover with level sequences especially. So if you want to support the channel and vote for a subject like this one, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you get a donation of $1 will get you access to all our videos early before anyone else. So massive thank you again to all our Patreon members, our YouTube members and everyone else in between for their continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.